thumbs and up the hearts. Invite somebody and come on, tag your family, tag your friends, and tag your enemies. share this right now and after you have shared it just simply type in the comment section that i've shared it come on i'm gonna give you a minute and 15 seconds come on you all come on let's share this y'all this word here it's gonna bless you it's gonna bless you come on come on
all the other names fade away. of you all um, today has been uh, such a challenging day for myself but I won't go into the details of all of that but uh, let me just say this this coming Sunday this coming Sunday we're doing a live production this coming Sunday in a, in, in a illustrated sermon way if you've ever been to any of our services or any any of our live productions, you're already, already, thank you, Pastor Brady. You already know that it's up there. We're doing a live production this coming Sunday. Uh, my daughter, Asia, is in charge, along with her and her team. It's gonna be amazing. This live production, you do not wanna miss. It will not be televised. We're not, as soon as praise and worship is done, we're shutting the cameras off. So you can't say, well, I'm gonna, I watch it from home. No, you have to be there in person, amen? And so um, this is one of those services you need to invite your family, your friends, your enemies, your constituents, your comrades, anybody that you know, everybody that you know, get them to, to Washington Boulevard this coming Sunday. I believe that, man, this message, this illustrated sermon, literally, we're gonna take this on the road. I believe that, man, it's a message that's gonna really, gonna, gonna, it's gonna really cause an epiphany to take place in our lives. So this coming Sunday, the doors will open up at 1.30. Um, man, it's gonna be amazing, amen? Uh, so let me go ahead and get started because again, I got a lot of ground. Uh, uh, thank you, Pastor Vinicius, that they, they, they won't leave the way that they came, I promise you. I'm telling you, if you don't enjoy God this coming Sunday, Brianna Faulkner, uh, see me after service, I'll reimburse you. That's how confident I am about what's gonna take place this coming Sunday. Cause you know, gas is like $20 a gallon. So again, I'll reimburse you if, um, you know, if you don't experience God, but you gotta come with a spirit of expectation and believe in God that God's gonna do something major, amen? Well, let me go ahead. Like I said, I got a lot of ground I need to cover. Um, so let me, let me, let me do this. This morning, I woke up 
at about 4.30 this morning. I woke up around 4.30 this morning because I had to, um, I had some business I needed to take care of, so I did not want to oversleep. So I, on purpose, made sure that when I woke up at 4 o'clock, 4.30 this morning, that um, I stayed up. Because I needed to get my, um, my brakes done on my vehicle. Um, and so the gentleman, and I don't know, I don't even know why I even asked for a seven o'clock, no, an, an eight o'clock appointment. Uh, because I'm like, man, that's the heart of traffic, especially on I-55. That's demonic. But needless to say, I made the appointment. So it was at eight o'clock. I got there at 7.31. At 7.33, the gentleman had my car already hijacked up in the air. 7.34, again, I'm timing all of this. At 7.34, one of the wheels of my vehicle, because again, I need to need brakes, because I have a, you know, a truck and things of that nature. So at 7.34, one of the wheels were already off. Now, rem remind you, I arrived at 7.31. 7.34, one of the wheels were off. He's taking, the, taking everything off of this particular wheel. 7.38, the wheel on one side is already back on. I need y'all to follow this. I'm, I'm being serious, y'all. 7.38, the wheel is back on the car. So which means that the brakes are already repaired on one side. Now at 740, he's on the other side. 742, the wheel is off. The brakes are on. I kid you not, less than 17 minutes, both sides of my brakes were done in 17 minutes, within 17 minutes. So again, I'm, I'm you know, again, you know, I'm, I'm gonna get a message out of everything. Everything that happens in life, I'm going to get a message. So, I'm asking God. I, I, I sit back and I'm, I'm in a maze of, of how quick this guy got this stuff done. Now, again, historically speaking, we normally uh, get breaks done. They normally take about two hours, three hours, depending on the mechanic, right? 17 minutes. Now God ministers to me. He said, Terrence, in this season, tell about seven people that I'm talking to. If you're one of the seven, just type in I'm one of the seven. Come on, you all. If you're one of the seven, just type in I'm one of the seven. I want, I want this part to minister to you just, just as well as it ministered to me. I got to put my glasses on because you guys know that, you know, this is not for fashion. This is for because of the light that's on my eyes. My eyes are sensitive. If you're one of the, if you're one of the ones, just type in this, this I'm one of the seven. Come on. Come on, watch this. Look at this now. So what God began to speak to me, he said, in this season, what I'm about to do for this, that people, he says, I'm getting ready. To, my people are about to see rapid results. What you thought would take you a lifetime or would take longer than what you expected. He says it's going to happen in a matter of moments. He said we have stepped into a season called rapid results. We have stepped into a season called surge. So now the prophetic is now flowing. So God tell me to get my phone out. Pull over. I want you to, I want you to, I'm going to speak to you. He says get ready for a sudden surge. Things that has been held up, held back, are suddenly about to be released. I says God, the promise that I gave you long ago, I come in full circle in this hour and even in this season. Says the Spirit of the living God, there is a shock like wave that is coming and all the world will see what I'm about to do and I'm bringing forth a strong movement unlike any that you have ever seen in times past. It will indeed be a rush and a sweep of victory, says God. I heard the I heard the prayer of my people, says God. I have even seen your tears, and I have come down to deliver them, says God. This world was gassed with amazement. 
as I accelerate my plans and my people forward, says God, the sound of the prophetic trumpet and declare that this is the time to let the voice of my people boom. I need about seven people just to type this one word, surge. Come on. What is about seven people just type this one word, surge. Come on, come on. What is a surge? A surge protector is used to block any sudden power current. It limits the amount of voltage supplied to an electrical device. Says God, too many have surge protectors on their hearts and even on their life, says God. The surge that I'm sending will require for my people to take the limiters off. The power of my spirit will flow through those that have moved outside of the, the barriers of, of church as usual. This new move, says God, of my spirit is marked by my glory. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the desert and the river and rivers in the desert make a way in the wilderness. Said the Spirit of the living God, this is your season of emerging. I, I need about seven people just to type this one word, emerge. E-M-E-R-G-E, -E -E, emerge. Just type that one word, emerge. The word emerge is defined as to come forth into view or notice as from concealment or obscurity. God is raising up unexpected people, voices, businesses, churches, and ministry from seemingly out of nowhere. Many have been hidden away by God. Perhaps what you thought was rejection was simply God's protection over your life. For those of you all that have felt forgotten or even all overlooked, God says, I have not forgotten you, says God. Just like Joseph, his brother sold him into slavery to stop his prophetic dreams from coming to pass. Just like him, the enemy also has tried to stop your prophetic promises from coming forth. And as God positioned Joseph, he too has positioned you to emerge. Joseph's brothers lied and said that their brother was dead. There are those who have said it is over for you. But God said those who celebrated your funeral, I need y'all to hear this. God said those who celebrated your funeral are about to witness your compact. Woo! Man, 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 man. I don't know if y'all heard what I just said. Let me say that again. He said those that celebrated your funeral, that celebrated when you were in a place called In Between, that celebrated when you were in a place called In Between, I heard God say, tell about seven people, those that got excited that you are now, you have now at a place called down, you're in a place called on hard times, but I heard God say, they too are about to witness your comeback. God was with you even in the pit, says God. He said he was with you in a foreign place. He was with you in the midst of gossip and accusation. He was with you in the hard, the hard place of betrayal, a hard place of hurt, the hard place of pain. He was with you in the place of confinement, says God. He says, get ready, for you will see God's hand sweep down and raise you up to a place of great prominence in the lands of your afflictions. Know this, Joseph had to be betrayed. Joseph had to be betrayed by his brothers to get him to a place where God could launch him, even the place of positioning into surreal greatness. What the brothers meant for Joseph's evil, God used it as a mode of transportation. Woo. Can I say that again? What Joseph's brother meant for his demise, meant for his destruction. God used it as a mode of transportation. Just like Joseph, you too are going to emerge. Joseph was suddenly presented with an opportunity to function in his anointing and interpret Pharaoh's dream. I heard the spirit of living God saying, divine opportunities are coming for you in this season. You are coming out of concealment and emerging into promotion. The temptation to faint or to lose heart comes right before the time of reaping. Woo! Let me say that again. The temptation to faint or lose heart comes right before the time of reaping. 
The enemy wants you to forfeit now because you are entering to the threshold of your harvest season, says God. And just like when God used, when God calls one to emerge, when was when David returned to Ziglag and discovered that the city had been burnt to the ground, according to 1 Samuel chapter number 30, all the men's wives and children had been taken captive. David's men were so grieved that they were speaking of stoning him. Everything seemed opposite of what God had promised David. The temptation to faint and to give up plagued him. But in the midst of his hard place, David sought the Lord. The Bible says that David began to encourage himself. And I can almost hear David now reminding himself of his history with God. How God anointed him to, to kill a lion, to kill a bear. And the greatest of all, the fearsome of the giant called Goliath. You too have history with God. You too have history with God. He said, encourage yourself. I command the spirit of weariness to break off of you right now. Do you feel the hand of the Lord strengthening you even right now? As he did to David, so he is going to do for you. God gave David the promise that he will recover all. I need about seven people just to type in recover all. Come on, seven people just type in recover all. Come on, just type in recover all. Just type in recover all. He too was is giving you the same promises. He said, you will emerge, says God. Not only did David recover all that was stolen, but he also was given the spoils of his enemy. I heard God said, not only are you going to recover all that he promised you, he said, you're going to even get some of your enemy's stuff. Oh God, you like David are going to reap the spoils of your enemy. You are emerging from a low place and God is bringing you into a high place, says God. For it was right after David's Ziglag experience that Saul died. And David was anointed king over Judah. That's found in 1 Samuel chapter number 31. What if David would have let weariness stop him at Ziglag? I hear the spirit of David God say, you are at the season of emerging. Shake the weariness off of you for, for, your, for your very next step is your defining moment, says God. I heard God say, tell seven people, you can't quit. Seven people just type in, I cannot quit. Said the Spirit of living God, refuse to forfeit your promises. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Keep standing, keep believing. It's, it's your season to emerge. I need about seven people. You may have did it once, but do it again. Just type in, emerge. Just type in, emerge. Oh God, oh God, oh God, oh God, I'm trying to keep my composure, but I feel the power of God breaking on this line. Said the Spirit of the living God, he said the month of July will be a month of my new wind. He said, I'm blowing, I'm blowing, blowing my breath into the lives of my people. I will exhale and it will be a wind of deliverance for my children. Even as I heard the cry of the Israelites who were in bondage and oppressed by Egypt for hundreds of years. So I have heard in this day the cry of my people and now I am answering them with the wind of change says God. Many have many have had their strength and drain from the obstacles which the enemy has placed on the path. Some are on the verge of giving up on their promises that I have made for them, says God. This is not the time to give up. I heard God say, this is not the time to give up. This is their season of deliverance. Barriers and, bl and blockage will be broken. He said, your obstacles will become your miracle. He said, your obstacles will become your miracle. Your obstacles will become your miracle. Oh God. And just like Moses and the children of Israel discovered the truth of the obstacles will become miracles. 
as they stood before the Red Sea with Pharaoh and his army behind them, Moses made a declaration of faith to them according to the word. And Moses said to the people, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will accomplish for you today. For the Egyptians you see today, for the Egyptians you see today, for the Egyptians you see the day, for the pain you see the day, for the lack you see the day, for the poverty you see the day, the brokenness you see today. Said the Spirit of the living God, by tomorrow this time, you shall not see it no more ever again. Said the Spirit of the living God, according to each Exodus chapter number 14 the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace and the Lord said to Moses why do you cry to me tell the children of Israel to go forward I hear the spirit of the living God saying tell seven people it's time to move forward I hear the spirit of the living God saying tell you it's time to move forward says God He's also telling you to move forward. You may be asking, how can you go forward when there's a huge obstacle that is keeping you from making progress? But God will say to you, stand still, as he did with the children of Israel. Get ready. You are going to experience the power of the breaker in your circumstances. There is a fresh wind of deliverance blowing through your obstacle, says God. Ooh. Oh God, oh God. For the Bible says, then Moses stretched out his hands over the sea and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. So the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea on the dry ground and the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left hand. And that's according to Exodus chapter number 14, verses 21 through 22. The Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind, according to strong, uh, the strong according to the word wind. As used here is the Hebrew word called ruach. I need somebody to type this word ruach. R-U-W-A-C-H, ruach, which means wind by resemblance breath. It's a sensible or even violent exhaustion, figuratively life in the name of Jesus. He said he divided the waters that were an obstacle or a barrier, prevented them from going forward. The wind of deliverance parted the water and dried the ground for the children of Israel to walk in the midst of the of impossibilities. Ezekiel was commanded to prophesy to the wind. He was commanded to prophesy to the wind. According to Ezekiel chapter number 37, verse number 9. He said, then he said unto me, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Thus said the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon the slain, that they may live. Said the Spirit of the living God, today. Open up your mouth and prophesy to the wind to blow upon the slain things in your life. There will be a resurrection, a resurrection life. There is a fresh wind blowing on your circumstances, says God. Said the Spirit of the living God, finally. He says, get ready for the month of July to be a month of my wind. I will breathe into you life. I will see, you will see deliverance like Moses and the resurrection life like Ezekiel. We are standing at the cusp of a mighty move of God, just like in the days when Jesus was born and King Herod was ruling forces in the, in the land who sought to abort the mission of salvation of man, according to Matthew chapter number two, verse number 16. Just like in the days of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, issued a demonic decree for the annihilation of all the babies that were born in Moses' time, according to Exodus chapter number 2. Yet, despite the opposition, we will see a mighty move of God taking place in the land 
starting even at the end of this month, moving into the month of July, says God. Just like when God raised up midwives in Israel's day, who would not abort the mission of God to raise a deliverer, to set, to set the people free? God says, I'm raised up an apostolic midwife in this hour who would not be silent and they will not be silenced. They shall release divine declarations that will shift nations, that will shift cities and families into breakthrough. They will yield their voice in fervent intercession. They will advocate for the righteous decrees to be established in the land. They will invade the seven mountains and be raised up as Daniels, the Deborahs, the Esthers, the Joseph, to see the righteousness established in governments, educations, arts and creativity, the church and other mountains of society. We will be a church without walls as we invade the world with the word that will release freedom and bring them to the place of breakthrough. We shall step into this new era suddenly. I need about seven people just to type this one word suddenly. Come on, y'all. Come on. Just type this one word suddenly. Suddenly. Oh, my. Type that one word suddenly. According to Joshua chapter number five, verse number nine, say to my people that they are moving into this new era of breakthrough. It will happen suddenly. The reproach of Egypt has been rolled away. Many have suffered shame in the last season, says God, because of the attacks of the enemy and because it seemed like the manifestation of the promise of God was delayed or altogether denied. But instead of shame and dishonor, said the Spirit of the living God, according to Isaiah chapter number 61, verse number 7, he said, you shall receive a double portion. It shall, it shall double for the trouble you experienced in your last season. You are stepping out of Egypt into a place of plenty and promises in the name of Jesus and that's the word of the Lord if you receive it just type it I receive it oh God oh God oh God if you receive it just type it I receive it oh God oh God oh God Oh God, I keep hearing the word suddenly. I keep hearing the word surge. I keep hearing the word rapid, re rapid results. Rapid results surge suddenly. Rapid results surge suddenly. Rapid results surge suddenly. Rapid result results surge and suddenly. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I teach y'all? Can I teach real quick, y'all? I'm going to bypass my notes. And I'm going to get down to the nitty gritty of this thing. Hallelujah. Can I teach y'all? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. I'm about passing all my notes and I'm gonna get down to the to the bottom of it. Because I feel this prophetic edge real strong. I need about seven people just to type in I am a son. Seven people just type in I am a son. Come on. Seven people just type in I am a son. Come on. Seven people just type in I am a son. I'm, I'm, I'm bypassing a whole lot of my notes. I just want to get down to the, to the bottom of this part right here. I need y'all to hear me. I'm going to teach y'all. I'm not getting, again, I got all the prophetic things out the way. I want to teach you for the next 20 minutes. Look at this. The first steps 
of this process of sonship is the ability to be able to recognize the father figure. I need about seven people just to type that one word recognize. Seven people just type that one word recognize. Look at this now. This is when you find someone that you want to learn from who has excelled to the degree and level that you are aspiring or would like to obtain. And that's the question that many of y'all need to ask yourself. Am I willing to submit and learn from the one that God has sent in my life to help me? When submission isn't done, look at this now. When submission isn't done, then the spirit of fault finding becomes your measure and your portion. Not only does that become your spirit, then rebellious is the garment that you tend to wear. You begin, you begin this process by consuming whatever that, that has had the ability that has caused you not to move forward. And so this is what happens. You begin this process by consuming whatever they have that is available to you. Not only does it become your spirit, but now it becomes attached to you. Be it their book, their recordings, their writing, their leadership meetings, invitation to glean from them, their conferences. You realize that you want to learn whatever they know and you are ready and willing to invest your life to learn from these individuals. Look at this now. So in other words, you want to seize the moment. You want to sit at their feet and become a sponge. Recognizing a father figure. I want to bless y'all with this, y'all. Recognizing a father figure does not necessarily lead to, to the sonship relationship. Sometimes the person may only be a teacher to you. And this is the problem that we're having in the body of Christ now. There's a mixed chromosome that's going on in the spirit. Paul said it best in 1 Corinthians chapter number 4, verse number 15. He said, as Paul, one of the first century leaders of the church wrote, he said, even if the church he formed may have 10,000 teachers in Christ, they have not more than one father. For Christ Jesus, he has given birth to them through the good news. Paul tells them, look at what Paul tells them. Paul tells them that you can learn from many people. But when it comes to father, when it comes to spiritual shepherding, you don't have many in each area. Note that, he, note that he made it clear that the sonship he was referring to was limited to a relationship with Christ. The difference between the role of a father and that of a teacher is that sons learn to submit and serve a father who will sort of give them his DNA or his identity. Whereas a teacher gives you knowledge, but you do not necessarily submit to them as individuals. Even though you may submit to the knowledge that, that was imparted to you, you do not serve teachers. Come on, y'all. I'm getting ready to give you the system of God that's getting ready to break the barriers off of your life. This teaching is about to break the barriers off your life. Now, look at this now. One becomes like their father while they will only emulate their teachers. You will continue what, what your father started, but you learn from your teachers to, to be able to do what is yours. You still have to honor teachers as people who contributed in your advancement, but you do not have to walk in their footsteps. Look at this now. According to Matthew chapter number 10, verse number 41, it talks about you receive from people according to what you recognize in them. And he says, he says, the Bible calls it a prophet's reward, right? Whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, right? And whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. Some of the people in Jerusalem, let me teach y'all, some of the people in Jerusalem did not recognize Jesus as the envoy from God, right? The representative of God for them. And in turn, because they didn't recognize, they could not and did not receive the miracles he had for them. So it is that same way for us even today. You must first be able to recognize the importance of receiving those who God sent in your life as 
your spiritual father so that you are able to receive from them what God has given to them that is yours because if you don't recognize them as your spiritual fathers, you will prevent yourself from receiving from them what is rightfully yours. Come on, y'all. It's about to get heavy, y'all. I promise you, it's about to get heavy. Look at this. They call this the law of the law or the principle of recognition. They call it the law, which is one of the most important laws in the Bible. It's the law of recognition. The recognition I am referring to here goes beyond just what our eyes or our natural senses can perceive. It is called divine connection. I need about seven people just to type in divine connection. Come on, seven people just type in divine connection. Come on, come on, y'all. Let's go there. Look at this now. Divine connection. It is when you encounter a person and you know without a doubt that, that, that this person has been sent in your life to take you to your next level. True recognition must be derived from a spiritual revelation more so than a physical or emotional sense of recognition. As a matter of truth, it is that same principle of recognition that one uses to choose a life partner, a husband, or a wife. This is what the Bible calls to give names. Let me bless you with this. When Adam was created, y'all, come on, y'all, I need y'all, let's get ready, let's get ready to walk this dog. Look at this now. When Adam was created, he was alone or all in one. So he was not the final creature that God wanted. The Bible says in Genesis chapter number two, verse number 18, look at this now. That is why God said this. It is not good that man should be alone. He says, I will make him a helpmate for him. God said that it's not good or perfect that a man stay in that state. That's what he's really saying. He's not good for a man to stay in that particular state. And as a result, God went on to create for Adam a helper so that they both could fulfill God's assignment to dominate the earth together. What I find amazing though is that in this next verse, in that same passage of scripture, God did not create Eve right away. Mm -mm. God did not create Eve right away. Instead, he first created animals out of the ground. I'm, I want to teach y'all. This is get ready to bless y'all. It's get, you get ready to have an epiphany. Watch, watch this now, Latrice. He says, he first created animals out of the ground. God's purpose in doing so was to test Adam and find out what, what names Adam would give to these animals. Note that in the, in the Hebrew culture, the name given to a thing equals its destiny or equates to its destiny. So in other words, God wanted to see if Adam would recognize anything in any of the animals that would cause him to believe that the animal was a helper of himself. Come on, y'all. Let's go there. We get ready to go somewhere tonight, y'all. This is confirmed in the statement of the man after the animal naming process. It is found in Genesis chapter number 20, verse number two. So, so the man gave names to all of the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. Adam said that he did not find a helper in any of those animals that corresponded totally to him. Let me explain something right here. I want y'all to pull up on your seat. Let me explain this to you. Animals are just like humans to some degree. When you consider that nature as they are made from the same material, which is the soil of the earth. Therefore, if, if Adam the man was looking at the physical aspect of an animal, he was going to choose an animal as his helper, thinking it would be suitable to him. This is what God wanted to find out, to see if man was more conscious of his earthly being or his spiritual being. Adam passed the first test. And this is what God is saying. He says, some of you all, you failed many tests, but God says, I'm getting ready to give you another chance to make sure you don't blow it this time. I need about seven people just to type in, I won't blow it this time. Come on, seven people just type in, I won't blow it this time. So as you're typing, I got to continue. So Adam, he now passed this first test, which was to find out if he would identify 
with any animal as suitable helper for himself. When Adam did not, he passed the test. Then God calls him to go into a deep sleep, at which time he created Eve from Adam's rib. When Adam saw Eve for the first time, this is found in Genesis chapter number two, verse number 23. He said, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. She shall be called warm man, for she was taken out of man. Adam recognized in the woman the inside of himself. He recognized the bone of his bone before he did the outside, the flesh of his flesh. He recognized his wife, not on an outside physical basis, which could have led him to choose an animal, but he recognized her on a deeper level. And this is the problem that many of us are having right now. We're choosing people based on the outer instead of looking at the inner. You're looking at men, how well endowed they are, how beautiful they are, but you have not checked the heart of that individual. You have not checked out what do their heart cavity look like? Do they have unforgiveness? Do they have malice? Do they have strife? So again, the outside will fool you, but the inside is going to reveal it. I'm going to say that again. The outside will fool you, but the inside will reveal it. So look at this now. So this is what's going on with my boy Adam. He recognized that there was something within her. Who is her? E. That was just like him. Adam immediately connected with the woman on a higher level, even on a spiritual level. So look at this now. Our blood cells are, ma are manufactured in the bones, which is called the hematopoiosis. Let me spell it, y'all. It's the H-E-M-A-T-O-P-O-I-E-S-I-S. Hematopoiosis. That's what it's called, which is called the life, which is inside the blood. So Adam began to recognize that, y'all. So Adam began to recognize that something about Eve that, 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 that that's triggering me. And see, this is the problem that many of us are having right now. We, we, we're looking with, and we're judging people and we're thinking that from the outside that this must be my connection. But what you fail to realize is that a connection will always agree with your spirit man. If it don't agree with your spirit man, in most cases, it's not of God. So now Adam begins to now recognize more than just the physical physical appearance of his helper. He could instantaneously connect with her spirit man. Many people, we choose the wrong partner because we limit their recognition to what they physically see with their naked eye. So, so now to marry an animal is to choose someone who suits you physically. <laughs> Let me say that again. To marry an animal is what you're saying this is what suits me physically but but who does not have the inner being that will suit your purpose and life assignment this person come on i want to help y'all some of y'all you've been choosing the wrong mates i'm getting ready to help you even in this area right around here this person may be very well maybe a well devoted believer but it would end in a catastrophe because the person may have what you need from the outside point of view, but their inner being will never help you fulfill your purpose. Ooh, my, my, my. Let me say that again. They may have the outer all together, but they do not match you spiritually. And there's nothing worse than being connected some, to somebody who make who make you look good who, who shines on the outside but spiritually there's a war going on you want to serve god but they want to do other things you want to read your bible but they want to twerk you want to you want to go to church but they want to go to the club this person was not designed to do so so be sure to name everyone that comes your way according to what you recognize in them and you will have the bone of your bones and not only the flesh of your flesh when you recognize come on y'all let me bless you with this when you recognize your spiritual father or your spiritual mother i'm just gonna say spiritual parents a purely physical or emotional level that relationship will not stand the test of time it will collapse when you begin to allow people to download into you just because they preach good. 
You never ever want to choose a spiritual leader just because, or spiritual parent, because the preaching is good, because the singing is good. You need someone that can help launch you to your next. Because if you do that, what will happen is it will collapse at the same point because only what is based on the word or the revelation from God will stand the test of time or last forever. You benefit. Let me show you all something. For those of y'all that don't think you need a, a spiritual you don't need no pastor. I want to bust your bubble right around here. You benefit from a father figure. When you submit to them and their instructions, their correction, and so forth and so on. Submission is, proport is, a, is proportional to the level of recognition. And you will not recognize someone just because you feel something. There are times I don't feel like serving God. There are times when I don't feel like doing certain things, but I know at the end of the day, I do not make my decisions based on how I feel. So just because you feel something, saw something, or thought something of them, this is where many of us, we miss it. Many of us, we miss it right around here. We won't submit because of a revelation of who the person is in their life. But instead, they will only want to submit to someone when their flesh or their emotions desire to do so. Sometimes, in my conclusion, sometimes people will only submit to you when they are in agreement with you. So in other words, in some instances, Kelly, we can determine it was not a true action of submission nor was it based on proper recognition. And whatever you will do on this basis will not last. There are instances, y'all, when someone submits to you only because they are in agreement with you. In such cases, in such cases, we can conclude that there was not an act of true submission and that false act of submission will fail as well. There were Jews in the Bible, in the book of John, chapter number six, verse number 53 through 68, there were Jews who had believed in Jesus, but stopped when he told them something that was against their emotions and carnal thinking. And they left him because their level of recognition was based on their emotions and not on what they received from God. The apostles told Jesus they could not go anywhere else because they knew that he is the source of life. The apostles have recognized and known Jesus on a deeper level and not just the physical senses. Jesus would check, would check in from time to time and to test them to show how deep their, recogn their recognition of him really was. If they truly had revelation of who he truly is. And this is the problem that many of us are, are, are having right now. When you don't submit, you don't receive. God's been dealing with me about this thing called sonship. Many of us, we only sons and daughters with conditions. So in other words, if they stroke my ego, that's my pastor, that's my dad. But the greatest level of sonship is when there's a disagreement. The greatest level of sonship is when there's a disagreement. Don't tell me that you're a son or daughter when things are going good. Show me that you're a son when things are going when things are, are not going the way that you don't like them once when jesus asked his disciples who do they say that i am peter stared and said he is christ then jesus told peter that even though peter had recognized that he jesus is the christ the son of the living god not blood or flesh begin to reveal did not come from peter but that was revealed to him by the father in heaven in Matthew chapter number 16, verse number 17, Jesus replied, this is what Jesus said, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, by the Father, which is heaven. Submission or abandonment is only done by faith, by hearing the word of God. If your submission is not based on revelation that you have, you will quit when the test come your way. Look at this now. Let me say that again. 
If your submission is based on a revelation that you have, you will quit when the test come your way. Many people are submitted, not because they are really committed, but because it's convenient. Let me say that again. Many people, they're not submitted. They're not even committed, but they only submit because it's convenient. They will, people like that, they will eventually abandon many things in order to submit until something happens that threatens their comfort level or their plans, and then they will show their true colors. You see your true colors when when, 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 when your back's against the wall. You see your true colors when, when, you, when you pop. I remember growing up, and um, old school, I, I went to an old school type of church and um, I, I grew up thinking that because I was gifted, because I was talented, that my gifts and talents will, will override my character. So in other words, I thought that man, I can do what I wanted to do, live how I want to live, because I knew how to sing, I knew how to play the drums, I was very talented. So one day, my pastor calls me into his office and he said, Terrence, I got a word that you're out here bogish. Now keep in mind, I'm thinking I'm the last Don. He said, you're out here bogish and I don't like it. I said, what are you talking about, Bishop? He said, you're out here bogish. He said, so what I'm gonna do, we don't even do this no more. He said, I'm gonna sit you down. And back in, about, back in those days when they set you down, it was a time of reflection. So Bishop Davis, he sits me down. I was sat down so long that Bishop Davis forgot that he even set me down. I'm talking about a couple of years. So now my mother now advocates for me. My mother now vouches for me. And she now tells me, she, we, goes in, we go in Bishop Davis' office, right? So now that we're in Bishop Davis' office, he said, man, I didn't even know, I, I didn't even know you were sat down. So he says, get back up. He said, before I get you back up, before I put you back up to start acting, to be an active member, he said, I set you down because you were on a path of destruction. You were on a path of, of, of a slippery slope. He said, it wasn't, he said, I could have easily prayed over you and restored you. He said, but your behavior became chaotic. Your behavior became like Nebuchadnezzar. You felt like you were above the law. And if you know anything about a person that's talented, that's gifted, that can sing, you want to showcase your gift. You want to showcase your talent. I never ever want to sit upon anyone who only is after my gifts, but can't groom my character. Let me say that again. I never want to sit up on anyone who can never groom my character, but only are fascinated by my gifts and talent. Whenever people overlook your error, your sins, your mistake, and give you a pat on the back, they're not really concerned about you. They look at you as a, 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 a number, as a tither, but a real father, a real spiritual father will sit you down because the Bible says open rebuke is better than secret love. So Bishop Davis taught me a lesson. He said, Terrence, I may not live to see the day and I'll never forget this and I live by this. This is still in my mind. He said, I may not live to see the day. God's getting rid of him. God's gonna make your name great. He said, God's gonna make your name great. He said, but, he said, but you have to but you have to understand this one thing. Charisma will get you there, but character will keep you there. Let me say that again. Charisma will get you there, but your character will keep you there. So in other words, if you operate in a place of integrity, even when no one is watching you, God says, I'll reward you. I never want anyone to call me spiritual father or say I'm your spiritual dad if I can correct you 
If you get an attitude because someone corrects you, you're not a son, you're not a daughter. You're just a member. In some cases, you're just a bastard. That's the word of God. Because again, when you are a true son, when you are a true son, when you are a true son and daughter, you understand this one thing. I'm going to submit even when it hurts. But watch the flip side of the coin. It just don't work in your favor. The Bible says, woe unto them that scatter my sheep. No pastor, no real leader, will, no real leader will abuse their authority over the sheep. So just because they are over you, they do not lord over you. They do not dominate over you. Their job is to make sure that they lead you on the path called straight. But you have to be willing as a son, as a daughter, to say, you know what? I'm submitting my gifts, I'm submitting my talent, and I'm even submitting my anointing. The Bible talks about Elijah and Elijah, right? This is found in the book of Kings. The Bible says that Elijah was anointed, the son. But Elijah understood this one thing. The son understood this one thing. That I cannot get to my next level until I am commissioned, I am sanctioned, I am blessed from my spiritual father. The Bible says that there was a company of prophets that were around. They were trying to convince the son, Elijah, your daddy get ready, our spiritual father get ready to die. Go on and do your own thing. Just leave, do what you have to do. Man, you anointed. And see, this is the problem that many of us have right now. You got the wrong people in your ear and you don't even realize this one thing. According to the word of God, you can get your inheritance until it comes from your spiritual father. Again, this goes back from Genesis to Revelation, the, the, the system of sonship. Why do we think, if you look at the life of Jews, right? I want y'all to do your study. Look at the life of Jews. Jews understand this one thing. They understand this thing called sonship. They call it the rite of passage. At the age of 13, they have what you call a bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, which means that at the age of 13, they now transition their son into manhood, into adulthood, which means now the father now gives them responsibility. He now grooms him to go to his next. Why do we, why do we, why do we think, or why do we see them so blessed because they understand that if I'm going to get anything out of life it has to come from or come through my spiritual father many of us what God spoke to me he says Terrence many of my people they're struggling illegally many of y'all you got an illegal struggle going on in your life and God says you are a submission away you are coming you are a coming under the shepherd shepherd away from receiving every prophetic word that was spoken over your life. And God says, I can't allow you to become who you think you want to become and I not be necessary. What do I mean by that? God says, if I'm going to be necessary in your life, you must have the system of God in place. I don't care how many degrees you have. I don't care who you know. If God's system is not in place in your life, yes, you're going to, you, 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 you're probably a prosper. But will you be fulfilled? If you notice a whole lot of millionaires committing suicide, because again, the Bible said, what profit a man or woman to gain the whole world and still yet lose their soul. So, 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 so I, I'm, I'm afraid of this one thing in my conclusion. Never trust anyone who has not been tested. A relationship that has not been tested is a relationship that cannot be trusted. I've witnessed many people put trust into others and lose all that they have built because they trusted someone before testing time was over and failed as a result. But by then it was too late and the collateral losses were great. God does not look for capacity. He does not look for gifts. He looks for faithfulness. I need about seven people just type in God is looking for my faithfulness. Come on. Seven people just type in God is looking for my faithfulness. Come on. 
Come on, seven people just type in, God is looking for my faithfulness. Again, God does not look for capacity. He does not look for gifts or ability. He looks for faithfulness. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs, chapter number 20, verse number six, who can find a faithful person? Which indicates that most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. But a faithful man or woman who can find. Being faithful, Jamila, is key to receive, to receiving what God has for you. Your ability to submit to what God tell you will be depend, will be predicated on your ability to submit to your spiritual leaders. How can you submit to a God you do not see? If you cannot submit to a father, you can't easily interact with. <laughs> can I say that again? I need to say that again. How can you submit to a God you don't see? If you can submit to a spiritual father that you can easily interact with. Many people are dedicated and, be, and, and, and will be willing to pay a price to be with you but they will leave you in a minute there's a contradiction take place or if there's a disagreement that takes place the bible says that judas betrayed jesus it's found in the book of mark chapter number 14 verse number 1 through 10 i want to bless y'all with this right now the bible said judas betrayed jesus because he did not agree with him about the woman who poured the perfume on his feet and this is the problem that we have in the body of Christ right now. And that is when you don't agree with your leaders, your spiritual father, the next step, the next thing that most of us do, you start dogging your leaders out to the people that already got a problem with them. So, so what happens next is now you start connecting with others who perhaps feel the same way as you do. And as a byproduct, of that happening now you feel comfortable in your flesh to now go against the grain and when that happens when you go against the grain the next step is betrayal the bible said judas thought that the woman should have given them the money instead and as an accountant you got to remember judas was the one that handled the money and as an accountant and from his standpoint judas may have been corrected in his assessment has, may have been correct in his assessment and that's according to John chapter number 12 verses 3 through 4 but he could not handle being contradicted by Jesus so in other words Judas was okay with Jesus as long as Jesus didn't confront him as long as Jesus didn't pop him dedicated people are useful but abandoned ones are essential for your success you can build a family you can build an organization you can build a ministry or a business with dedicated people but true success i need y'all to hear this y'all and i'm done for real true success only comes when you find abandoned people to work with you moses was so abandoned to the vision god gave him to take his people to the promised land that he was willing to lose his place in the book of God instead of having a big name at the expense of God's vision that's found in Exodus chapter number 32 verses 31 through 32 now this is abandonment this kind of abandonment can only occur when there is a correct recognition based on what God told you when you submit or abandon yourself to someone because you recognize them as God sent into your life, you are trusting God and not the father figure. And this will not only give you peace of mind, but it will cause God to step in if the father figure is out of alignment from God's will for your life. And I am done. In other words, God is saying, even if your spiritual father or spiritual mother is operating foul, God says, even if they're operating in a place called foul, 
you're going to still yet be blessed because you understand this one thing. I'm going to submit, but I'm going to also pray for my leaders. I'm not going to dog them out because I understand still that my destiny is in their mouth. Why do you think David was a man after God's own heart? Oh, God's own heart. The reason why David was a man after God's own heart was this, because David, not only was he the worshiper, but David was loyal. David understood this one thing. I know Saul hate me. I know Saul wants to kill me, but David understood the system of God. What is the system of God? Saul is still in control. Saul is still the leader. God deals with his leaders. David said, God gonna deal with Saul if he's operating if he's being bogus with me, God going to deal with him. But it's my responsibility as an understudy of Saul is to pray for him and bet not nobody else talk about Saul and bet not nobody else put their mouth on Saul or try to kill him. For the Bible says it was David's armor bearer who killed Saul. And David heard that his armor bearer killed Saul, the man who was trying to kill David. David killed him because David understood the system of God. And this is the problem that most of us are having. We're trying to create our own system instead of following the system of God. What is the system of God? You have to submit even if it hurts. You have to submit even if they're doing wrong, especially if God sent you there. God said, I sent you there to correct some things. Not only correct some things, but to pray. Whatever spirit, if it's a foul spirit, you have the authority to pray it off of your leaders. Why do you I think why do you think I sent you there? You want you thought it was gonna be peaches and cream? No, you said you got the authority to, to break the back of the devil. This is Pastor T. I pray this word bless you. If you were blessed by this word, just type in I was blessed by this word. Come on, y'all. If you were blessed by this, just type in I was blessed by this word. Come on. Come on, come on. Come on, y'all. Come on. If you were blessed by this, just type in I was blessed by this word. Never get caught up in gossip. Never get caught up in slandering your leaders. Uh-uh. No, no, that's not how you do it. You pray for them. You pray for them. With Noah, Prince, you pray for them. I'm telling you all. Y'all spiritual pastor is telling you, whatever you do, don't miss Sunday. It's going to bless you. You are blessed by this word. I need every one of y'all right now. You are blessed by this word. I need every one of y'all right now to sow. Sow under this anointing. The cash app, the Zell information is right there at the bottom of the screen. The cash app, the Zell information is right there at the bottom of the screen. If you are blessed by this word, just type in. I was blessed by it. I dare you to sow. I dare you to sow. I dare you to sow right now. Amen. I dare you to sow. The sun gets the prize. The son gets the inheritance. I don't know about you all. The Bible says that even the prodigal son got his inheritance because he understood this thing called sonship. He came back and got what was rightfully his. Even though he had abandoned his post, he came back and got what was rightfully his. And this is why I hear God saying, when you repent, I mean really repent, God says, I'll now give you what's rightfully yours. He says, I'll, I'll give you what's rightfully yours. He says, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. That's what God says, I'll give it to you. But it comes through the teaching of sonship. It comes through the understanding of sonship. God says, I'm not holding it from you. I'm holding it for you. God says, I want every one of y'all to walk into your greatest season. This is your greatest season. Just lift your hands right now. And just begin to worship him right now. Stop fighting it. Stop fighting with the system of God. Submit even when it hurts. Submit even when you don't understand. Because I promise you, if you got real spiritual parents, they're going to help you get to your next. They want to see you blessed. They want to see you blessed. I'm not about you. Come on, just lift your hands and worship him. For the next one minute, just lift your hands and worship him. Nothing else Sit up the thumb, sit up the heart. Just send them up, send them up. Let me know you're still here. Caught up in your presence. 
Yes, God. Yes, God. I just want to sit here. I don't want to submit with conditions, God. I want to abandon myself. I want to submit, God. I want to give you my all, God. I'm tired of me. I'm tired of going around this mulberry bush. When God has given you the blueprint on how to get to your next submission, sonship. Yes, God. Yes, God. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. Hallelujah. And more than anything that Stop making life so hard. Stop making it hard. I just want you. Yes, God. Oh, Jesus, I'm sorry. When I've come with my agenda, I'm sorry when I come with my own agenda. Yes, God. I forgot that you're enough. Take me back to where we start. I open up my heart to you. Yes, God. through the emotion I'm sorry God yes Kelly yes God I want to open up my heart to you God I want to submit God I'm tired of me I want to get out my own way God I'm my biggest enemy it ain't the devil I want to sit at your feet. Yes, God. Oh my God. Submit. Submit is not a curse word. It's a God word. Even Jesus submitted. Jesus, you don't owe me anything. But more than anything, I want to give you everything that belongs to you. Yes, God. We just want you. Nothing else. Yes, God. Nothing else. Totally submit. Totally submit. Nothing else will do. You want peace, it's found in submission. You want to live your best life, it's found in submission. I'm talking about for real, for real. Totally submit. You want to give your life back to Christ, just type it. I want to submit my life back to Christ. Come on, right here on this live, you can submit your life back to Christ right now. Just type it, I'm ready to come back. I want to submit my life totally, God. I'm not saying you're going to be perfect, but now you want to you want to adopt this thing called sonship. Just type it. I want to rededicate my life to Christ right now. Come on, right now. Come on. Just type in the comment section. In a sense, begin to pray. Come on. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Stay right there. Don't leave. Stay right there. Somebody else. Woo. Come on. Somebody else. Just type it. I want to submit my life back to Christ. Come on. Just type it in the comment section. God says, surrender unto me. God, we give you praise. Thank you, thank you. With Noah, Prince, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. One more.
want somebody else. They want somebody else. Woo! Yeah! Somebody else just type, I want to submit my life back to Christ. Come on. Somebody else. One more somebody else. Woo! Thank you, Venus. I give everything back to you guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, one more somebody. Three, that's three right there. One more somebody. One more. Yeah. I'm going to walk you through the prayer of salvation. One more somebody. One more somebody. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, we have we have Kelly, we have Venus, we have Miss Prince. I want y'all to do me one huge favor. I'm getting ready to give you walk you through the prayer of salvation. And as soon as we're done with this prayer, I need you, my admin, Crystal. Is going to contact you. We need some contact information, but we need to get you plugged in. You need to get plugged in. I need you to repeat after me right where you are. Repeat after me. This is going to be the biggest decision you ever made in your life. This is what God said. He said, I'm married to the backslider. I'm not telling you that your life going to be perfect after this, but I'm telling you now, you are now getting ready to walk in the path that God, that God now has for you. Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I recognize that I'm a sinner, but I'm saved by grace. God, your word says, according to Romans 10 and 9, if I confess with my mouth, believe in my heart, that God raised Jesus from the dead, I shall be saved. And today, I denounce and renounce all activities of sin that's in my life. Jesus become the head of my life. I accept the plan of salvation according to Acts 1 and 8. According to Acts 2 and 1. According to Acts 2.38. And because of this prayer, Right now, I am saved. Come on, y'all. Sit up the thumbs. Come on, sit them up, y'all. Come on, sit them up, y'all. Three people were added to the kingdom. Come on, we got Venus. We got Kelly. We got Miss Price. Come on, y'all. Yeah. Yes, you're saved, Kelly. Yes. You're saved, Venus. You're saved. With no friends, you're saved. Come on, y'all, sit up the thumbs. Hey, God, I feel your presence. I need y'all to please. Crystal's going to call you. Give her your information. Give her your information. She's going to call you. We want to get you plugged in. But I'm telling you, get the two Washington Boulevard this coming Sunday. Type in the comment section, you three, just saying, man, I'll see you at I'll see you at church, Pastor T. Come on. Yeah, you're crying so bad. Yeah, yeah. Woo! Come on, don't log off. Woo! Come on. The heavens are rejoicing. The heavens are rejoicing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 come on, celebrate, it's celebration time. My God, I need every one of you, I know I said it once, but you, you saw it on good ground. I need every one of y'all to sow right now. There's an anointing that's on this live that's getting ready to break the back of poverty, that's getting ready to break the back of debt. I hear God say, when you sow, you're about to reap a harvest. I dare you right now to sow. Come on, sow. God just added. We 
give you praise. We give you glory. Now are we the sons of God. We're going to help you get your inheritance. We're going to show you through the word. Oh, my, my, my. What a day, what a day. I dare y'all to put this at your status on the line. Three people gave their life to Christ. They were snatched from the hands of the enemy. Come on, y'all go throw them in heart crazy. Come on. For one minute, go throw them in heart crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got you. We got y'all. We're not going to drop you. We're not going to drop you. Yeah, yeah. I'm telling you all. Let me say this in my conclusion. I'm telling you all. If you get this revelation. If you get this sonship. I put my life on it. I've seen. Through the word of God. Even through my own submission. Of sonship. How God turns my situation around. God don't want us to operate like nomad, nomadic people. We have to have a covering. Going to church don't mean that you're covered. No more than me sitting in my garage making me a car. You need a pastor. You need some spiritual parents that can pour into you. That will have watch over your soul. That will bless you. Woo! Three people gave their life to Christ. Those three that gave your life to Christ. I'm telling you that this is the system of God. You can't circumvent it. Many people are trying to do their own thing. But I'm telling you what God is saying. Under this sonship is where your miracles are, are, are broke. Your miracles are released. Many of us, the reason why we're having a hard time in life, it ain't because God failed. It's because you won't submit. It ain't because the prophet lied. It's because you won't submit. Your life is not your own. Even Jesus submitted. Even Jesus submitted. So if Jesus submitted, what makes you think that you don't have to? Woo! Stop making life hard and get back into your covering. The enemy wants you to operate outside of covering. He wants you to make you think you're good. He wants to make you think that, man, I got too much going on. Sunday is my only rest day. Man, God says, man, what if I take all of that from you? Then what? God, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to, you don't have to hit me in the throat, God. I submit. Amen. Thank you. Thank those three that gave their life to Christ. Chris is going to contact you. Please, please. Uh, Kelly, Venus, uh, Rwona, Prince. Welcome to Faith World Family Worship Center. Welcome to the kingdom of God. I promise you, you made the best decision tonight. Amen. Watch life becomes better for you. All because of this one decision. And I'll be a true prophet. Watch you see the hand of God metamorphically change some things and turn some things around for you. Amen. God says, I've been waiting on you. Many of us, we've been lying, saying, I'm waiting on God. God says, stop it. God says, I'm waiting on you. Amen. All right, y'all be blessed. See y'all Sunday. We got a live production this coming Sunday. Bring your kids, bring your family, bring your niece and nephew. This production is about to be life changing. This, this production will be life changing. Amen. Everybody just put that as your status man Three people gave their life to Christ Come on and tag me in it Glory to God On the line We doing kingdom For real, for real We gonna draw near to you My heart and flesh cry out Yes God Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, the other of Sunday. Oh, the other of Sunday.